Hey traders, welcome back. So a bit of a funny one here, but you know, it's a kind of, it's, a, it's an interesting question and actually something that uh, you probably get asked as well if you're a trader and you speak to people who are, uh, you know, you know you trade the markets, they'll ask you advice, it's always the same thing with a trader, like where's the stock going, where's that share going, what's the market doing, like hey listen, I don't know, so give me the chart and I'll give you a bit of an idea, but I don't know, I haven't got a crystal ball. But this is something that's asked quite frequently is, should you trade companies or shares of companies that you are familiar with? So what do I mean by that? So in other words, you know, um, if you shop at Marks and Spencers, should you be trading Marks and Spencers? If you shop at Tesco's, should you be trading Tesco's because you're familiar with them? Should you be um, trading Apple because you like Apple? Um, generally speaking, the answer is no. Okay, just because you know the company doesn't make it actually makes it zero zero use from a trading perspective. However, there is something to be said for this, and this is I'm going to move cut from if you're a kind of longer term trader. If you frequent Marks and Spencers, if you frequent Tesco's, if you use Vodafone uh, or whatever it may be, if you've noticed something like, hey, um, you're into female fashion, you go into Marks and Spencers and you know that the, the next, the, the last sort of uh, seasons of fashion, whatever they call them, the seasons of collections, that's the word I'm looking for, not really a fashion, female fashion guy, but the collections that come in aren't really that desirable to the demographic. You know, the, the, the women who are looking at them, you're thinking, hey, I don't like them, none of my friends like them, um, I don't see many people in the store liking them, then you may have something there. Obviously, we're not talking about this, it's not technical analysis, it's not, it's not that, but you may have something there that you say, you know what, from a personal perspective, and from somebody who knows the industry or who knows the demographic or who they're aiming it to, and I have a little really small sample size, I think that they've not hit it on the, on the head here. And the story of that company is that they're trying to improve their women's fashion revenue, for example, and they're just not doing it. I, I can see it with my own eyes, the stuff's not very good. I can see people, my friends, they think it's very good and it's not very busy. By all means then, you've got earnings coming up if you want to take a risk over earnings and appreciate you've got open-ended risk there, then then I don't see a reason why not. Some people say, oh, you can't do that, it doesn't make any sense, but I don't see any reason why you wouldn't do that. Um, you've got to obviously not to put your full net worth into it, but if it's something that you're seeing the cycle of change and you're a regular customer of something and you have that small sample size, then there's no reason in my eyes not to try and take a trade and take advantage of that. You might be wrong, um, but you might be right. Um, that's the kind of thing. Uh, from an investment perspective, when people say, oh, you know, investing in stocks, you know, that you know, I always say, listen, if you're going to invest in something, invest in something that you feel comfortable investing with. There's so many stocks out there that are B2B that you've never heard of that are doing well. But if you think you like a stock and you want to put some, and you th and you feel like you want to put your cash in it, that's a different, that's a different, you know, that's a different thing you're trying to achieve. You're saying, listen, I trust. I'm going to buy a little portion of this company because I like what they do. That's investing, that's absolutely fine. If that's your, your parameter and your thesis, that makes sense. If you prefer to look at numbers, you don't care about the actual company behind it, then that's your thesis. If you prefer to look at the management team and the group that's in charge of it and, and back a good team, then that's your thesis. At the end of the day, it's whatever your thesis is. So let's go back to the point. Should you trade companies and shares you're familiar with? The answer is no. However, if you are noticing something on the ground, if you're noticing something then perhaps in the chart as well, perhaps you notice something in the chart that matches what you're seeing. Perhaps you go down the high street and say, listen, no one's in Next anymore. No one's going to Next anymore. No one ever shops in American Apparel. Uh, Marks and Spencer's food hall is empty uh, all the time. And I live in a city center, blah, 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 blah. Then you can kind of use that as a thesis or a basis to potentially come up with a trade idea. Whether or not you just go straight in off that is entirely up to you, of course. But you can say, hey, listen, I think it's, 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 it's really busy all of a sudden. It's always busy. I'm always queuing for ages. They're doing really, really well. They've changed this. They've changed that. They've changed the layout. Um, they were struggling. The chart was down here. And now they've made a big change. They're putting a new management team. The, the, the store is more comfortable. The service I'm getting is very, very good. Everyone's saying it's very, very good. I'm shopping there personally more. That kind of thing. Then that, that's a reason perhaps for you to say, okay, well, I might take a long here. I might take a long assuming that that has worked. I can see it on the front line before the chart has seen it, before the results have come in, before the numbers in the tills have gone into the numbers in the spreadsheets and have been released to the street or to the city, um, you're getting a bit of a head start in there. As long as you, at the end of the day, guys, the point is, 
You can do anything, any reason, any strategy. Some people trade off the moon, lunar cycles, right? Whatever, it doesn't even matter. The key to all of this, and this is the takeaway from it, and kind of why I've alluded to this, is it's all about this. It's all about the risk. You know, if you decide that you think that is a good strategy, that you want to take it because you've seen something like this, as long as you know the total risk you're putting into the trade, where you're coming out if you're wrong, how much you're risking, all those kind of things, the risk potential from holding over earnings, as long as you've got that capped, it's a trade like any other. It makes it no better doing it this way than it does if you're doing technical analysis on a chart, if you're reading lunar cycles, if you're reading tea leaves, if you're using fibs, what any of those things that are perceived to be more credible. At the end of the day, guys, it all comes down to risk. If you think you've got something here which is going to lead to a good trade out of it, and you can find a good place to get in and cap your risk, then I say, why not? Some people will laugh at it, but I'll say, why not? I think it's a good idea. What do you think, guys? Let me in the comments below what your thoughts are on that. Um, give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos from me in the future. And I hope you have a good trading week. I'll back with another video soon. Take care.